In the long history of the Christian church, there have been countless fundraising appeals. Nearly every congregation puts out an annual appeal for pledges for the coming year, and occasionally they have special appeals for mission or for capital needs. We call the latter a capital campaign. Our congregation is no different. We've done all three of these at one time or another. But in the 2000 year history of the church, there have been two fundraising appeals that tower over the rest in significance. One we know had a lot to do with sparking the Protestant Reformation, and the other took place in the very first decades of the church's life. Paul even mentions it in several of his letters. No wonder then that we often turn to Paul for language that's appropriate to use in worship when we call for the morning offering. Hello, I'm Stuart Baskin, pastor of First Presbyterian Church of Tyler, Texas, and this is your daily devotional for Tuesday, February 22nd, 2022. In my opinion, the two most consequential financial appeals in the history of the church are the offering that was taken up to support the church in Jerusalem in the middle of the first century, and the offering that was taken up to build St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. On this second one, one of the fundraising appeals came in the form of selling indulgences, offerings made by the living on behalf of the dead to supposedly free them from purgatory. This offering created such a scandal that Martin Luther's famous 95 Theses focused on it, and one can argue that it was one of the primary causes behind the Protestant Reformation. The appeal for the Church in Jerusalem, on the other hand, carries no such stigma. It was carried on without any false motives. In other words, it was a straight up ask for money for a specific purpose. No gimmicks, no tricks. This offering is is mentioned in Acts, Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, and Galatians. It appears there was a famine in or around 45 AD, and this famine hit the Christians living in Jerusalem and Judea especially hard. Many Jewish converts to Christianity there found life after their conversions to be especially difficult, as they faced social rejection that often led to the loss of income. Paul was keen to collect money for the relief of these Christians in Judea and Jerusalem and to raise it from the Gentile Christians in Asia Minor, in part to create strong bonds of connection between Jewish and Gentile Christians. Yesterday we heard words from 2 Corinthians chapter 8 where Paul says, You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor. That by his poverty, you might become rich. Now in 2 Corinthians 9, he returns to his appeal for the saints in Jerusalem using words that bring home the importance of generosity in the life of faith. We use these words actually in two different introductory sentences to the morning offering. The first, our sentence for today, goes as follows in a form I have slightly amended from Paul. It says, Give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, but freely and joyfully. For God loves a cheerful giver. For Paul, the important thing is that the gift is both voluntary and generous. He urges the Corinthians to be generous with their offering, not because they are being compelled to, but because of a generosity of spirit that reflects the generosity of God in giving us grace through Jesus Christ. Paul even says at the beginning of this entire section, I do not say this as a command, but I'm testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. This is actually a very subtle form of motivation that Paul uses. His appeal to the competitive spirit to the Corinthians increases their generosity He's betting that the Corinthians wouldn't want to be outdone by another church somewhere else, especially a church in a poorer region. As I mentioned, I have slightly altered Paul's words here to further underline his point. Paul himself doesn't actually say freely and joyfully, but I think it is certainly faithful to his thought process. So there it is. 
we invite people to give to the work of the church, not out of compulsion, but out, out of a free and joyful sense of generosity. And why? Because God loves a cheerful giver. Tomorrow, another offertory sentence that begins where this one leaves off. But for now, may God continue to bless you and keep you in all that you do this day and in all the days ahead.